Hello there, this is Miss Nakayama. Today's lesson is P1, Fundamental Counting Principle Permutations and Combinations. So this is the first lesson of our probability unit. And I hope um, y'all are just as excited as I am to get started on it. So our fundamental counting principle is defined as the product of the number of ways events can occur. So to give you a um, quick example of that, all right, if you have three pairs of pants in your closet and you have five shirts, then you have three times five different outfits. Three pairs of pants, five shirts, 15 different outfits. And you can extend that for as many different options. You can add it if I've got four pairs of shoes, then I would multiply by four, so, so forth and so on. Permutations is a modification of the fundamental counting principle and can be used when arranging objects in order. That is a key word. Remembering um, whether the order matters. How do I put my clothes in my closet? How do I line books up on, on a shelf? How do people line up at the door? Those are all different ways of arranging things where the order is a different way. Then you have something called a combination it's another modification of the fundamental counting principle, but the order or the arrangements is not considered and not important. So um, another example, if I walk into a classroom and I want to choose three people to serve on a committee, it doesn't matter whether I choose B, Janiah, or Reagan, or Reagan, Janiah, and B. It's the same three people that I'm choosing. Okay, now if I walk in and say I want a president, vice president, and secretary, they have different positions. So that's an example of a permutation. If the order doesn't matter or the job is not specific, then it's a combination. So let's get going and see the different kind of examples we're going to have. So example one, you're buying a sandwich. You have a choice of five meats, four cheeses, three dressings, and eight other toppings. How many different sandwiches with one meat, one cheese, one dressing, and other toppings can you choose? So you've got to think about the different decisions that you're going to have to make. And in this problem, we have four decisions. So if I have four decisions, then I have four blanks. My first blank, I have to choose a meat. How many meats do I have to choose from? Five. Then I'm going to choose a cheese. How many cheeses? Then I'm gonna choose a dressing. I have three of those, and I'm gonna choose other toppings, and I have eight of those. So, to answer the question, how many different sandwiches can we make uh, with those items? You multiply it all together, and you get 480. All right, a town has telephone numbers that begin with 432 or 437, followed by four digits. How many different telephone numbers are possible if the last four digits cannot be repeated? So you've got to think about, I've got 432, that's the beginning, those numbers. Then I'm going to have four more digits. So that's a total of seven digits. Now, how many choices do I have for the first digit? Well, up here, y'all, they both started with a four. So that's only one choice. The next number, they both had a three in them. The next one, 432, or 437, I have two choices. And then, how many different telephone numbers are possible if the last four digits cannot be repeated? Okay, so we're saying we've already used three digits with 432 and 437. So how many digits are left? Well, we started with 10 and we've used three, so we have seven, and then we have six, and then we have five, and then we have four for a total of 1,680 phone numbers, different phone numbers. Okay. Now, as I mentioned above, a permutation is where the order matters. And this is a formula for, <laughs> LOL, not what I meant to do, um, is the formula for permutations. All right. This is a button on your calculator that you need to be familiar with. Okay. Um, the formula is N factorial over n minus r factorial. And I hope y'all know that a factorial button, if you see five factorial, 
that's equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So you take every number on down to 1 and multiply them together. That's what factorial means. So I do want to show you this, even though if part of your problem is just finding, um, if, you're, if it's a method of doing it, you can use the button on your calculator. You need to know how to use your calculator. If not, it's also helpful to know how to use, how to calculate this by hand, because sometimes your calculator will give you an overflow error. So, for example, if I chose, if I had 8P2, that would be 8 factorial over 8 minus 2 factorial. Well, that's 8 factorial over 6 factorial. And 8 factorial is, think about how I can write this, it is 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But I can do it, I can write it as 8 times 7 times 6 factorial. And why did I stop at 6 factorial? Because that's what I have at the bottom. So if I write it over 6 factorial, then you can see that these two are the same thing. So my answer is just 8 times 7, which is 56. So you don't have to do all of this work all the time. You can just write this to show your work. Okay? Now look at number 2A. 26 golfers are competing in the final round of a local competition. How many different ways can three of the golfers finish first, second, and third? Y'all, there's two ways to do it this problem. However you see it, whatever is easier for you, do it that way. Okay. It does not matter. Um, I probably would start off by saying, okay, first, second, third, I got three blanks. If I have 26 golfers, then I've got 26 choices for the first blank, 25 for the second blank, and 24 for the third, which will give me 15,600. You could also say it is 26 choose P because it matters if they come in first, second, or third. So that's 26 factorial over 26 minus 3 factorial. That's 26 over 23 factorial. And so then I'm going to write the top and I'm going to write it up until I get to this bottom number. So that's going to be 26, 25, 24, 23 factorial over 23 factorial. And then if you were, you can see how this looks exactly like that. So again, whichever. Now you don't have to write all this out again. You could just write this on your paper or you can write this on your paper, but you got to show me something when you show me your work for your quiz and your test. Okay. B, you were left a list of eight chores and how many orders can you complete six of the chores or all eight of the chores? Well, the key word in this problem, y'all, is how many different orders. So that means it's a permutation. I have eight chores and I want to choose six of them. So find that button, put it in, 8 NPR 6, and you get an answer of 20,160. What if I want to choose all eight of them? That's going to be 8 P8, and that is going to be 40,320. Okay? Now, sometimes when you do permutations, there is a repetition, okay? Repetition is any letter that repeats and the type of problem that we see. And basically what this <clears throat> tells you is that you just divide through by the repeats. And I'm going to show you that. So it says, find the number of distinguishable permutations of letters in algebra and mathematics. So in algebra, I have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters. So I'm going to have seven. How many of them repeat? Well, I have two A's. So I would divide through by the repeats. So seven factorial over two factorial. You can put it in your calculator. That is 2,520. Now, mathematics, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I got 11 letters, but I have two M's. And I have two A's and I have two T's. So I divide by each one, however many I have. If I had three of something, it would be three factorial. So you put that in your calculator and you get 4,989,600. Okay, that was permutations. On to combinations where the order does not matter. And here is our formula. This is what the button looks like on your calculator. 
And our formula, this is exactly like permutations, but the order doesn't matter, so we actually divide through by those repeats, okay? So if I, before I did 8P4, well, now I'm going to show you 8C2. I did 8P2, and I'm going to show you 8C2. So that's going to be 8 factorial over 8 minus 6 factorial and then 2 factorial. So that ends up being 8 over 8, 7, 6, and then it's 6 factorial, and then 2 factorial is 2 times 1. So you can see when the order doesn't matter, this is 56 divided by 2, and that's going to give us 28. <coughs> All right, I got to make it through these examples. Number four, you're taking a vacation. You can visit as many as five different cities and seven different attractions. Suppose you want to visit exactly three different cities and four different attractions. How many different trips are possible? Okay, so this is the kind of problem, y'all, that combines combinations with the fundamental counting principle. How many different ways can I visit three cities? Well, there's five cities, and I only want three of them. Does the order that I visit the cities matter? If I go to Venice, Paris, and London, is that the same thing as going to London, Paris, and Venice? It is. So the order doesn't matter. So this is 5C. 5 choose 3. And then I have seven different attractions, and I'm going to choose four of those. That's 7C4. So 5 choose 3 is 10. 7 choose 4 is 35. So I got 350 different trips are possible. I thought you never knew that. All right. So look at this one. Suppose you want to visit at least eight locations. How many different ways? So at least eight. Okay. How many different locations are there? There are cities or attractions. That's five plus seven. So there's 12 of them. And if I want to visit at least eight, then I could have 12 choose eight, or I could have 12 choose nine, or 12 choose 10 or 12 choose 11, or 12 choose 12. It's a mouthful, okay? I can't do all of those. It doesn't make sense, but it's an or situation. So I'm adding these different possibilities. So 12 choose 8 is 495. 12 choose 9 is 220. 12 choose 10 decided that it didn't want to write, so it's 66. 12 choose 11 is 12, and 12 choose 12 is 1. So when you add all those up, you get 747 different types of trips. Okay, last example, number 5. Using the standard deck of cards. I don't know how many of y'all are familiar with cards, so I'm going to give you a very quick rundown if you've never played cards before. You need to know this information. I will not answer these questions on a quiz or a test. So, <clears throat> first off, every deck of cards has 13 in each suit, and there are four suits, okay? Half of the deck is black, and half, half of the deck is red. The black suits are spades and clubs. The red suits are hearts and diamonds. You have 13 in each suit, ace through 10, jack, queen, and king. So, you got to know that information using a standard deck of cards. If the order is not important, how many different seven card hands are possible? Order doesn't matter, means it's C combination. I have 52 cards and I want seven of them. So it's 52 choose seven, which is a really large number. Okay, 133,784,560. And that is all you have for fundamental counterfeit permutations and combinations. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, y'all, please don't hesitate to email me or come see me. Y'all have a great day.